Welcome back to Breakthrough Conversations. My name is Brett English. My name is Ryan Otego. And we've got Jordan Candlish in the house from State Shifters, an embodiment coach and a big TikTok influencer. Jordan, thanks for coming down, bro. I appreciate yeah, it, man. Really appreciate Lads, it. Lads, thank yeah. you for having me. Yeah, yeah, I'm super pumped to dive into this conversation awesome, today. Awesome, man. Super grateful, bro. There was one question I want to ask you, I've been dying to ask you, about your necklaces. Mm. Is it bioenergetics? Uh, biogeometry. Biogeometry, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. What is that? How does that work? And what is, what is that? Um, oh, well... Good friend of mine, uh, Jake Loretto, who's a breathwork facilitator. Yeah. You, you're at his. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, at one of the retreats I was on, Jake was wearing one of these necklaces and he had this cube that he brought to one of the sessions we were doing. And he told us a little bit about it. And I was like so fascinated by the, the, the kind of um, the, the structure of this shape and then yeah. the, the actual science behind it. And he linked me uh, a podcast with Paul Check and the, the founder okay. who went deep into like how these structures work and what this ancient Egyptian science is. And it's about form. It's about shapes and how shapes hold a, a frequency and an energy. Mm. And like everything around us is a shape and each shape creates a different energy field around it. Yeah, and yeah. This, this guy, this Egyptian uh, guy has discovered or he went deep into the science around when you create very specific shapes, they start to um, emulate the energy from the sacred power spots. So yeah. when you go to like Egypt, these, these sites, they're sacred because they're where they're located in the ley lines of the earth, there's, a, there's an energy, a vortex of energy, but then also the shape of the pyramid on these sites. Uh, um, what, he, what he's been able to do is like tap into the energy from these sites and put them into shapes on these structures. So like right. on, on the necklace, he's got very specific shapes on there that create a harmonic frequency to support the, like the subtle energy field. Damn. of the body and I'm, I'm doing my best to explain this as best as, as yeah, I can because the, oh, the, yeah. the science is so fucking like mind-blowing like it's yeah. actually mind-blowing I bought his book and, and, and was yeah. reading it because it was just this is the future once we tap into this like what Tesla was tapping into yeah. understanding that like there is energy all around us and we can manipulate it and use it and harness it to tap into yeah. elevated states of consciousness or to, to access different states within ourselves and I just found it so fascinating. So it's not just for the look, it has yeah, a purpose. purpose yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I like, I like you to ask that question. Yeah. 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 I find it interesting. Like, how do you come up with the idea or like, man, I need to study this? You, His story I mean? is so, yeah. Like, this is where What's we. What's the guy's name again, bro? Um, Ibrahim. Ibrahim, I think that's his last name. I can't remember his first name. That's what I'll find him. Yeah, you'll find him. But like, <laughs> I can send you the Paul Check podcast. He's been yeah. on Paul Check's okay. podcast twice. Um, and then he has a, if you, if you use Gaia, do you, do yeah, you, yeah, 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 if yeah. you search him on Gaia, he, there's a little um, series that he's done with someone on there. So yeah. I just like binge watched all of, all of his stuff. Yeah. Um, but it's so fascinating. Like he's dug this science out of books that were written in, um, what's, what language do they speak in? In was it Egypt, Egyptian, Egyptian oh, um, um, was it Aramaic? Aramaic? it's like Arabic, yeah. I think, like some like yeah. different language that like the book was the information is only written in that language. So you have to mm -hmm. know how to understand that language firstly, extract that information, and then know wow. how to harness it into English and, and apply sense. it. So yeah, it's it's sacred. Yeah, it's yeah. ancient information that's now being applied in a modern day context. It's it's amazing. It's yeah, totally it's right. crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Like also like Egyptians, man. I feel like they had a vast amount of knowledge that we still oh. haven't even tried to understand. Oh my goodness. And yeah. It would be very interesting to like, I would, I'd, I'd be very interested to speak to someone who has taken the time to kind of decipher like what, everything that they've got and to see That's what. man, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's the guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, bro, um, where does Day Shifters come from and how did this whole journey start for you? Yeah. Um, the journey began... I mean, like the brand State Shifters began probably in 2017, okay. where I was working as an accountant at Deloitte, which is like an amazing accounting firm. It was like Deloitte. my dream job. 17, yeah. damn. Um, no, nah, 2017, 17. I, would oh, been, okay. I would have been 22. And um, yeah, started working as an accountant. Like I ticked all the boxes, like finished mm. my degree. I was like, oh, I went for this graduate job at Deloitte. Like my dream job landed it mm. and then started working and realized that like, oh, there's something missing in my life there's something that felt off or empty i felt i'd achieved all these things yet didn't feel fulfilled and it began like an inward process of trying to uncover mm. like what what is my purpose like well, if this isn't it what what is it um that's when i dove deep into meditation and yoga and i discovered that i was so disconnected from myself wow. i was so disconnected from my emotions and uh, this kind of spiritual dimension in my life opened up and I just wanted to share 
I honestly just wanted to share what I was learning because I was like, there's got to be more people feeling this way. Am yeah, I the only yeah. one that's taken this path and gone down, work, working in a corporate job, going like, is this it? Like, this, is this fucking what life's meant to be about? I looked around at like people around me and everyone, and everyone no one seemed happy, mm. you know, in the office. No one seemed really like happy and passionate about their work. So I just wanted to, I started blogging, writing blogs about like what I was oh, learning nice. about. And then I was like, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create a, create a brand. Because yeah. uh, I was probably a little bit too embarrassed to just like start Especially sharing things on my personal Instagram. True, so I yeah. wanted to create some, something separate. Mm. Um, yeah, and I was just trying to like think about what, what I wanted to name the, the, the brand. And uh, I remember hearing Tony Robbins talk about uh, okay, the yeah. state that you're in, you know, when you make decisions determines mm. your future. Like if you want to make better decisions, shift your state, be in a, be in a more elevated state. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'm going to call my brand like state shifters, like all the things that help you like shift your state of being nice. to make better decisions. Yeah. Yeah, just stuck. Just start sharing stuff on my on my yeah. social media, and Amazing, here we are. Because mm. your your content is is incredible. Like, yeah, you thank simplify you. Simplify things so easily to digest in like sixty seconds or Thanks, less, man. Yeah. which is just like the TikTok, TikTok key. Well. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I was following you, and I had no idea you were in Perth. Like, oh really? Yeah, you're yeah, like well. you're like one of the guys because I started TikTok maybe about nine months ago. Yeah, solid. And I got about fourteen thousand followers, and I was like, yeah, amazing. doing it every day. But then I just lost all motivation. I just stopped. But when I was up and up, I was seeing your stuff. I'm like, holy shit. Like, then I realized you were in Perth and I realized you were friends with Alex Waters. I'm like, damn, like, that's incredible. So what I want to ask you was, um, oh man, I can't remember what I was going to say. I lost, I lost, I've lost track. Yeah. Well, Perth's yeah. a small place, but yeah. I feel the TikTok journey, it's, it's so interesting now that like most people that I'm either working with or connecting with mm. start now find me on TikTok. And yeah. I just blows me away because I, I started that journey a year ago. I only yeah. just started making content a year ago on this platform was because mm. my, my girlfriend was like, you need to get on, you need to get on here. Like this, this, this platform is where it's at. This yeah. is, this is yeah. taking off. I had so much resistance to it because uh, I loved making longer form content. I love just like making podcasts and mm. speaking. And like you said, the shorter you can make your video, it forces you to be yeah. way more um, succinct and, and, and capture your information in, in a way that's engaging and lands. Yeah. Um, How was that process for you to, to get like 10 minutes into 60 seconds? Um, yeah, I went through a, a phase like probably what you did where mm. I was like every day I was like, I'm going to make three videos a day yeah. and just get better at, yeah, just uh, already I was using Instagram stories mm. to just like pull out my phone and, and speak what was on my heart or share like a little yeah. nugget that was coming through me. So I started just doing that on TikTok yeah. um, and then naturally uh, the more I did that, the more I started to find what content was working. And then I just mm. went into that. And the, what worked for me was when I was learning things, as I, I learn a lot, as you guys probably do, like reading yeah. books, what, listening to podcasts, if there's something I was learning about, mm. I would then make a TikTok about it. Mm. So like say I was learning about uh, inner child work. I was reading yeah. Nicole LaPera's book, uh, do, How to Do the Work. I don't know if you've read that book, but no. it's a great read. I was reading that book and I was like, I would read a chapter and be like, okay, I'm going to make a TikTok on this. And how yeah. can I capture what I've just learned and share it in a way that's engaging uh, through my video? So I would like script it out and then just like get my tripod out and just like bang, bang, three, three quick shots. And yeah. you've got a little video that addresses inner child stuff. And yeah, yeah it was ed educational at the start. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I feel like the key with the TikTok is if you can be educational, entertaining and inspiring yeah. in one, uh, they're the videos that, that do really well. Yeah. So... Yeah, I've been trying to, yeah, focus on that recently. Yeah. How did you overcome like that imposter syndrome or like that imposter process? Because when you first start, I'm assuming like you, like you said, you'd be a little bit embarrassed to like put that kind of that side of yourself out there. But how did you, what, what, what helped you be like, fuck it, I'm just going to do it anyway? Yeah, um, I think that I got over that part. Um, initially with my content when I first made State Shifters and I was yeah. posting content on Instagram. I like had so much resistance to making content. I was so afraid of what people were going to think of me. Mm. Um, I got over that initial hurdle and then the next hurdle that you're probably referring to is like making content on a platform where most people think it's just for like teenagers dancing and stuff. Yeah. And yeah, I guess I was just like, uh, it was just a decision. It was just yeah. a decision. She'd be like, I'm going to fucking give this a crack. Yeah. I'm going to go for it. Yeah. Nice commitment. commitment. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think it's like, if you know why you're doing it, and for me, I wasn't doing it to get money. I wasn't doing it to get clients. I was doing it because like, I, I wanted to make an impact. Like the stuff that I 
you know, the, the, what I, the content I want to share, I know is going to impact people. Like I want to inspire people. You know, yeah. I want to inspire people to like live a better life or like go mm -hmm. after their passions or connect with themselves. And the minute I started making content from that energy and that intention, it just started to land. And then don't get me wrong, there's been times where I've, I've been making content and I've been like, oh, you know, like how can I make it for this person or to attract that kind of client? That content never does as well. Mm, it yeah, has to yeah. come from that place of like, I'm doing this because I, I fucking love it. I literally love creation. I love that, that's actually so true. Yeah, yeah, making something. It's a bit of a trip sometimes. Sometimes I sit down, I'm like, okay, I'm going to study how TikTok works, the algorithm, what goes viral, how it goes viral. And I make that video. Yeah. It, 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 I know. And a video I'm really passionate about, I'm like, fuck, I'm going to do it. It just, it just took off. And I was like, dude, what the, the, hell, man? the <laughs> first video, I think I might have, I can't remember if I told you this when, when we met, but the first video that took off for me that like allowed me to actually get an audience on TikTok was a video that I did not plan at all. It was literally coming from my grandfather passed away the, yeah. the day before and I coincidentally picked up a book at a bookstore, mm -hmm. um, Many Lives, Many Masters by Brian Weiss that my best, one of my best friends had given to me or yeah. told me to get um, mm -hmm. about a week before he passed away in a motorbike crash. Oh, yeah, and I yeah, coincidentally yeah. picked up this book, grandfather passed away and I was like, Whoa, what the fuck, I've got this, I've got this book again. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I just like was flicking through it and I was like, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share the story behind this book about yeah. why this book is so important to me. And I literally came back from a walk, set up my phone and just, just, just shared this story about like how my friend died and, and how he told me to get this book and mm. you know, the meaning of death and what I took from that. And I just recorded it and posted it and didn't think anything about it. I was like, yeah, just put it out there. You know, this might yeah. help someone. And I'll never forget <laughs> waking up that next day and having like 20,000 new followers. Wow. And Damn the amount of comments bro on this on this video mm. and the amount of dms i got from people saying i lost my daughter thank you this helped me so much or like my husband passed away my sister committed suicide like oh. whatever it is people just messaged me saying thank you i'm gonna buy this book or can't wait to read the book and i was like man my friend's death has has purpose that has now passed on to me and i've got mm. to pass that on to like mil over a million people got to yeah. watch this video and it was like that moment that was like man beyond the grave he's impacting people yeah through mm. like the lessons that i got from his death that's, that's powerful, powerful. Man. Yeah. yeah there's a crazy uh, synchronicity as well yeah of yeah. like your your path and your mission and how everything just coincides so brilliantly yeah at yeah. times yeah because you just couldn't pick it you can't man that's why yeah. again you just have to make you have to share things that are on your heart yeah yeah on your heart stuff that is like wisdom to you you know mm. um that stuff lands differently yeah 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 based on that like how did your how did that book change your perception of death? Oh man, Oof. this uh, changed everything, man. It changed everything. It like unlocked a, a much deeper meaning to life for me because, have you read the book by the way? No, I haven't. No, I haven't. <laughs> yeah. yeah, have you read it? No, I haven't. Yeah. No. It's, uh, it's, quite a, <laughs> it's quite a um, profound information to read. Alone, yeah. like alone the information is profound. But when, the infam when, when the, you discovered, when I discovered the book from a friend who literally said to me, bro, do you, do you believe in life after death? And the last thing he said to me was like, you know, make sure you get this book. This, is, this, is, this book is oh, a wow. game changer. That's, that's, yeah. And then he passes away and I'm literally like at home. This book is like unopened. In your hand. Yeah, unopened. I got the phone call. I was like, fuck, I'm going to go pick this book up and read it. Holy shit. This is like, clearly oh, there's something in this book I'm meant to receive. So, so the information landed differently for me because it's almost like it was it was spirit consciousness something far beyond what my mind can comprehend saying you need to receive this that there's a, there's a lesson here for you um and that and that was it that's what i took from it was our souls come into this human incarnation to to get lessons to learn things mm -hmm. and you get lessons through pain it's part of the human experience right yeah. souls don't experience pain when when we pass on and you're in that transition that, that transitionary period mm. where, you're the, where, you're, where you're the infinite oneness, there's no pain. There's, no, like, there's just pure love, pure bliss, pure oneness. Mm. And if you take like 5-MeO-DMT, which I've done a couple of times, you realize that's the Tur place. Tur Tur yeah. Yeah. yeah, we did that a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Oh, a couple yeah, of weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Of course, you fresh off the toad, lads. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Love the it's it's just, yeah. Yeah. English accent came out. Damn. Fuck yeah, bro. <laughs> Fresh up the toad in Fresh up the toad, yeah. Damn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A that, that's... Experience and a half. Man. Potent experience. Very, yeah. very potent experience. Undescribable. Like, you can't... I just can't be able to put it into words because it's just something that it takes... It just... It just, it just blasts you, bro. 
Yeah. yeah that's the word. It just blasts you. Like, it, there's, there's nothing else. Like, even comparing it to, like, DMT, I did find DMT it was a little bit more spiritual, I guess. Like, it, 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 it kind of opened, opened you up, opened a channel for you to communicate with other beings, whereas mm. I found, like, um, the toad really didn't give you that chance. Nah. No. You're in, you're in and out, yeah, right? Yeah, pretty in quick. And out, yeah. How um, was the feeling of coming, coming back for you? Like, you know, you get blasted and then poof, you, like, you come back. How, how was that? For it you? was like, it gave me a different appreciation of my body. Mm. I think so, yeah. I think that was the biggest thing, it was a different level of appreciation for your physical being. Um, because pretty much the same thing. You, you came back and you're like, holy fucking shit, like this experience is. It's, it's amazing and it's beautiful within itself. And it just, I just remember, like, uh, I, I came back into my body and I was just holding my legs. I was like, God damn, like, you know, like, I love these quotes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, they're like, uh, it was like, I have a different, different perception about the human experience. Totally different. Totally different. Bro, it was like, surreal. Yeah, I'm just like getting goosebumps just in you sharing that and me reflecting on, on that moment when I came back into yeah. my body after that experience and it's all it's the only way I can describe it is like being reborn as an adult like you know when a child gets born out of out of the womb that the child doesn't have a brain to comprehend like wow I'm, just, I'm alive yeah mm. but when you come back from the toad it's like holy shit I'm, I'm a human I'm, a, I'm alive I can breathe like I can hear like I, I'm existing mm. right now that moment like to me absolutely like just shattered me into tears of joy to just yeah. like, be alive because when you when you when you go out, you're like it's it's beautiful, but there's no there's no you, there's nothing to compare it to. You're just it's just love. It's just like exist. It's just pureness, like yeah. oblivion. So the the gift that we have is like our soul has decided to come into this human form mm. to experience like everything, like the pain. Like the pain is so beautiful because we need that. <laughs> Without yeah, the pain, yeah, yeah, yeah. we don't get the lessons. We don't get the the expansion and the evolution. So I just had a new appreciation for like everything in the human experience wow. after yeah, yeah. my friend's that death and after the toad, it was just like the pain, the pain come, the pain is the teacher. Yeah, that's the true. Pain that's is true. the teacher. Yeah. yeah, I had a different experience though when I was coming back from the toad, where it felt like a rebirth, but at the same time it felt like I was pure consciousness with absolute, absolute nothingness and one with all. And then coming back to my body, I can feel my ego like reaching up all these memories coming back into my head like like you're British, English you're a human being all this all these different yes. experiences and I was like whoa 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 what the fuck am I remembering you know because mm. I'm like as I'm remembering I'm creating this reality again and I was sort of like okay what is real what's not and I remember I got bitten by an ant at that time and I was like yeah. okay this the earth is real but everything else is it the structure of yeah. my thought matrix yeah and now I'm projecting like consciousness coming through a filter that filter is me and my memories and I'm just like what is real what is not Mm. Am I like exaggerating my memories or like, you know how you sort of create a story in your mind? I was seeing that story um, objectively and saying, I don't want to remember these things and be this person anymore. Yes. I just want to leave some stuff behind as I come back again. And that was like a different kind of rebirth where I can sort of get a better grip, a better grip from reality and create my own reality from a place of power rather than stuck in memories and trauma and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, bro. So that well, was well said. an incredible yeah. experience. Yeah. It's interesting how the mind like, grasp and my, I could I could notice my mind grasp trying to grasp onto reality mm, yeah. as I was being pulled out of it and uh, that that to me was the is the most intense part about any like in big psychedelic journey yeah, is like yeah. your, how much the mind tries to control like mm. what's going on especially the masculine mind like we love to like try to control and think we have control of everything that's going on and when you take psychedelics it just like rips you out of that mm. and shows that you like you are you are not in control yeah. There is something far greater than, than us that is like managing everything and you just, you have no control over it at all. True. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's scary. It's scary to the mind. It's scary. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful to the soul, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I had a, I really had a guy on the other day saying the same things like, I am not in control. Like, hmm. It's like a mantra. Yes. I you love know? that. And wow. That just rings true, man. Yeah. I wanted to ask you, like, you were doing a lot of men's work mm -hmm. and uh, coaching. Mm -hmm. What are some common themes you're seeing that are playing out amongst men today that they need help healing and moving forward to reach that divinity i suppose yeah, yeah good question i like how you the word, use the word divinity yeah i've been Thanks, using that a lot recently Have you? yeah nice i pulled that <laughs> <laughs> you tapped into it yeah. um uh addictions man addictions, addictions dependencies um coping mechanisms 
Mm. That's the pattern that I'm seeing. Like yeah. most most people in general, but especially men, have addictions. Mm. We're, we're, we're addicted to something that is cutting us off from our power. Now those addictions can be toxic and unhealthy, like the obvious ones, like porn, alcohol, cannabis, mm. video games, Watching sport, vapes. Yeah. Vapes. <laughs> nicotine, <laughs> nicotine, that nicotine is like an that. addiction. Yeah, nicotine is yeah. a huge addiction. Like mm. one of the biggest. Um, they're the unhealthy ones. Like, and they're, they're so obvious, right? Yeah. Um, but then you've got the not so obvious ones, like social media. Yeah. It's just normal. Everyone pulls out their phone and flicks social media. Yeah. Um, You're just flicking through like senseless, senselessly. Yeah. Like there's like <laughs> there's yeah. no value that you're getting. You're no. just like. Just, just watching random shit. Bro, like, yeah. and, this, and this is where I'm at a point now in my process where like, I am so aware of like, this drug in my pocket. My pocket. Yeah. I'm so aware of how easy it is to get the fix, mm. the dopamine fix, you know? And that is one of the addictions that I'm like, managing with discipline. But the not so obvious ones are working. Like addictions to feeling the need to work all the time. Addiction to needing to go to the gym all the time. Mm. The addiction to being busy. Like there's all these subtle addictions that are happening in the background that is coming from, and I made a video about this yesterday, yeah. it's coming from an unconscious refusal to face your own pain. Mm -hmm. And if you think yeah. about that for a moment, every addiction is coming from that. There's something down there, there's some sort of emotional pain that you're avoiding through this addiction or dependency. Mm -hmm. Coffee is another one. Caffeine is another massive addiction that yeah, everyone's yeah. like, it's normal, right? Everyone drinks a coffee every day. Yeah, every day, every morning, but like, like a ritual. what if you were to stop? Like, can you stop? And mm. a lot of people can't. A lot of people can't go a day without caffeine. Yeah, That's an addiction. So bad for your adrenals as well. Yeah. yeah, you're addicted. But how would, how would someone go through the process of healing this addiction or, um, or experiencing those emotions so they could heal um, that element of themselves that they haven't really worked through? Yeah. Yeah, and I, I shared this. I had my first men's call with the guys in my group yesterday. I, was, I spoke about this, so it's fresh in my mind. Nice. You, to break an addiction, you, you have to start with acknowledging that you have a fucking addiction. <laughs> like, the acknowledging, look, I, you know, I watch porn every day. It's, it's a fact. I'm addicted to porn. Yeah. Mm. Acknowledge it. A lot of people don't, just don't acknowledge it. Or right. like, you're yeah. addicted to caffeine or whatever it might be. Secondly, you've got to then identify, like, why do you want to break the addiction? What's your why? Like what, what's the motivating force behind you wanting to break out of this pattern? Because mm. if it's not strong, if you don't have a strong motivating force, when that urge arises, or like it's four o'clock and your phone's right there and you want to check how many views you got in your video, if you don't have a strong reason why you want to break that dopamine addiction, you'll just like, you'll just go back into it. Yeah. Because yeah. it's, it's strong, like it's nicotine as well. It's strong, like it's a uh, deep rooted urge. Mm. So you have to have a real strong reason as to why you want to go down a different path. Then you got to have that part. What is that new pattern, the new thing that you're going to use to like support something healthy? So instead of checking the phone, it's like, okay, my phone's in airplane mode. Now I'm going to go sit at the beach for an hour. No phone. Let's no. Do some push-ups. Do something that. else. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then it's and then it's just a matter of just like reinforcing that. Just keep doing it consistently. Carve out those new grooves in your brain. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's a t it's a tough thing to do, but I feel like you got to have some level of accountability there as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's keeping you accountable mm. to that? Um, yeah, and that's that's where I would start. So, oh, and I guess the the part that you mentioned was like the emotion that's underneath yeah, it. Yeah. You know, once you remove the addiction, then you're 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 faced with the discomfort. You're faced with this like urge of like, holy shit, I'm feeling really anxious or overwhelmed right now. Wow, mm. this is intense. Then it's like, okay, can you practice being with that? You, can you have a practice where you sit and just allow this emotion to be felt? Are you courageous enough to just experience it, breathe into it and be like, hey, it's okay. This is just a feeling. Yeah, be with yeah. this feeling. You know, don't run, with, run, run from it. Just be with, be with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's, in my opinion, where true power is found. And that, in my opinion, as a man, is the most potent and, and most important thing we can do, is be willing to feel. And understand the feelings. Yeah, yeah, love it and learn to just like embrace it. Like it's to the pain, right? Yeah, yeah. Embrace the pain, um, and then when through doing that, from what I've noticed through doing this myself, for you know my own work, is you then can be a larger space. You then unlock more capacity within yourself to be a larger space to hold energy mm -hmm. for other people. So that applies to anyone, like your relationships. You know, every relationship with your, the feminine in your life is like, yeah. can you hold the energy of that like? the chaotic energy of sometimes emotions they're changing they're always moving it's like if you don't have a relationship with your own feminine 
how can you have how can you expect to have a good relationship with the external the women in your life yeah yeah you know um how do you find that balance between the um with between yourself and like managing your own emotions and the masculine and feminine in your emotions within your emotions and the feminine like your relationship how how do you find that like good balance without like letting it affect your relationship mm -hmm. yeah because like you don't want to become too feminine and then you know go to my if you go into your partner saying oh babe i'm going through all these emotions can you hold, hold space for me blah blah, blah. Uh, females don't want that yeah they don't want yeah. us to be like you know soft and relying on them to be the, the masculine presence for us so it's like for me the balance is you got to be on your own like as a man we got to be we got to have time in solitude and that's mm -hmm. something that i've i really prioritize um i have i spend a lot of time alone you know yeah. just sitting with and noticing what's like what's present in me right now or mm -hmm. what am i feeling right now can i be with this feeling and, and really connect with just that my body <laughs> check yeah. my body because in the past it's been really difficult mm -hmm. or i've been very disconnected from my body and then the balance is not there. I'm not present in my relationships. So the more time you spend alone practicing that, then when you go into your relationships, you can be more present. Yeah, yeah. And that's what, that's the container. That's the masculine presence. I'm here. I'm solid. Whatever you've got, whatever you're going through, I got you. I'm here. Um, once, once I can give that to my partner or anyone, uh, that's depth. There's depth that's created in that connection with someone through that. Yeah, yeah. But how do you, how would you separate between like sharing your feelings with your partner and like holding that masculine grounding within yourself? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a, that's a, like a really good question. Mm -hmm. um, it comes down to, well, the individual, firstly, like yeah. if you want to have a relationship where if you're going through something and you need your partner to hold space for you, um, me personally, like uh, I don't like really open up to my partner and say, ask her to like hold space for me a lot. Be like, hey, I'm, I'm really anxious right now. Can you just like listen to me while I express this? I'll, I'll go to my the men in my life to do that, mm. or I'll go to like a coach or someone. Okay, um, yeah, yeah. To me, like uh, females are looking to us to feel safe, and if I'm bringing my problems to her, my emotional problems to her, uh, she's not going to start to like doubt my my stability. Yeah, you know. Um, but don't get me wrong. After I've moved through my emotions, I will go. To her and I had this conversation with my partner last night. I said to her, I was like, hey, like I'm, you know, there's been times where I haven't really felt connected with you. There's been times where I've been f felt really upset by things you've done. Um, and going forward, I would really love if we can have a new way of uh, communicating this with each other or something like that. Yeah. Uh, I feel working through our emotions on our own or with someone else and then having a conversation with the women that, that we love or our partner and saying, hey, I went through this the other day. I was so anxious yesterday and I was so fearful that I was going to like let you down um, but this is what I did yeah, you know, yeah. I took space and they, they love that mm. the ownership yeah, of the ownership definitely yeah. definitely yeah did, did that answer your question yeah yeah, yeah. It, it did, it did. Good, yeah. good question by the way yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, you have a, do you have a partner no I don't yeah. Yeah, yeah but like good stuff to just become aware of because then you know because when you're when you're spending time around females man they're always tuning into whether they're aware of it or not how they feel around you yeah, yeah, and the more present you safe, are, yeah. yeah, the more present you are, the safer they're gonna feel. And it's like it's just it's polarity. It's literally polarity. Like they just, it's a magnet, you know. Yeah. The depth of that masculine energy then creates the polarity for the feminine to like soften and open. And it's a it's a really fascinating thing to to witness when men become mm -hmm. more conscious. I'm sure you guys have noticed it as well. It's like when women feel safe, like they can express, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, and it's. The fucking men, the toxic masculinity that has disconnected women from that that freedom yeah. of expression that is that is so beautiful. When yeah, you see it. it's kind of forcing women to like take on that like masculine role in, in society, yes. pretty much. Yeah, bro. Yes, yeah. that's it. Women thinking that they need to like fucking take over the world and like do all these crazy like roles and jobs that men are meant to do. Yeah, you know, and it's and that's what breaks the polarity. Like it's. Yeah, there are specific roles that men and women are here to play right. just based yeah. on our energy. And yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Totally agree with you. Yeah, that. yeah. It's a tough topic because yes. you could throw in like the feminist um, movement, and people are quite sensitive sometimes who are not aware of this dynamic. Yeah. Um, they can get quite triggered by, it, by yeah. that. But it's just, I, I, I just find it, it's truth and it's honesty. Yeah, it's so fucking it's truth 100%. Honesty, yeah. yeah, 100%, um, man. Like, it's not like, I don't see it as we're saying that any women are less than it's just the kind of like 
there's a role, there's a part that you play Correct. in each. Like the, the masculine plays a part, plays their role, and the feminine plays a part and plays their role. Yes. And it's, oh, it's been like that since the beginning of time. You know what I mean? Like it's you, just on the basis that I guess now that social dynamics are changing a little bit and based on the problems that we have right now, everyone is trying to like re-modify and change these roles. Yeah. Whereas like it's, it's been like this for a very long time. And I think, at least in my perception, like, nature has created us this way for a specific reason to serve a specific purpose like if you if you went back to the primitive days like we were the strength of the providers and we were the safety you know what i mean like if they ever came down to like a point where like a even it's not going to happen now where there's like a bear coming into the coming into the home who's going to protect us I'm the one who's going to put my mm -hmm. life on the line. Correct. To yeah. protect you and the child. Yes. And that's the role that we're meant to play. And like your, their role is to nurture the child, make sure the home is safe and the home is loving and, um, and uh, everyone's eaten, all that kind of stuff. And that, that role is kind of like the, the yin and yang. It's just the balance mm -hmm. of, of what we have. You know what I mean? And it's, I, I totally agree with you with that. Yeah. Really well said. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. Nailed it, that. Yeah. And it's an important, I think it's, important for us to like kind of embrace that and understand that importance there's nothing wrong with like mm -hmm. well they're both, both equal roles yeah they're One's both equal roles yeah. yeah 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 no it's 100 percent, man and it's like at our core you know, like nature is feminine right? yeah. at our core yeah life is feminine and right now i feel like nature the earth is like calling us to to have a better relationship with the feminine energy in our life so that it yeah. can rejuvenate this. We, the world needs like nurturance right now. It needs sensitivity right now, you know? Yeah. And, and I think that's the imbalance that is starting to correct itself. Mm, yeah. Um, we can see that playing out. Like there's just, just there's been a far too much toxic masculine energy that's been disrupting that balance like within our lives. And as, as we collectively rebalance, which is it's always perfect at every stage, it's perfect. And um, I can see it happening right now. There's just, there's just mm. more in the people that you attract and the, the people that we spend time with, like I feel way more like harmonious in all my relationships. Yeah, yeah. You know? Um, so there's a bit element of trust there. Yeah. Yeah, with the collective like rebalancing that's, that's happening yeah. at the moment. You just kind of have to let it go. Do you find that yeah. um, getting, is there a level of vulnerability that you allow yourself to express with your partner? Um, Yes, this is actually one area of my life recently where yeah. I, I um, declared that I want to want to go a lot deeper. Yeah, uh, I realized, and this is the thing, man. There's, there's, as I'm sure you guys can relate. There's, there's areas in our life that we we go through lots of expansion, and then we might forget about this area where we're not going as deep. And I've gone through a lot of expansion recently, like in my business, in my own, own personal growth, and mm -hmm. you know, in a few other areas. Um, then I realized, oh, wow, I've not been playing as big as I could be in my relationship with my partner. Yeah, yeah. And it comes back to that. It comes, always comes back down to communication and working together to support each other and going deeper. Um, I guess you could use the word vulnerability as, as a way of saying like, hey, like I want to share with you more of what's, what I'm feeling and what's going on inside of me so that you can have better information to know how best to support me and so that I can have better information around how best to support you. Yeah. If that dialogue's not happening in your relationship, mm. like you, you can't go deep with each other because you yeah, don't know how yeah. to support each other. Um, so yeah, I guess to, to try to answer that, like I'm, I'm trying to be more, more open yeah. um, but without bringing my problems to her, yeah, you know, like yeah. I said before, without like saying, hey, I need you to like help me or fix me. Like, no, 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 like I'll work through my own problems but I'll fucking share with you everything that's going on. And, and allow her to be like, hey, maybe going forward, can you support me here? Or next time this happens, would you be able to do that? Uh, so yeah, that's a commitment I've made recently with my, with my partner, man. Yeah, so. yeah. And I think it's, it'll be, at, at least I find it would be very difficult to kind of div to find that fine line where you're like, yes. you're vulnerable, but at the same time, like you don't, you, don't want to, you don't want her to look at you as less than or Correct. Or being weak. Or weak, yeah. 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 That's the last thing you, you want. Um, and in terms of like back to the polarity thing, what I noticed is when, the, when I'm open around my partner and I share these things with her and she's open with me, I'm way more attracted to her. Yeah. Like, I, there's, this, there's much deeper intimacy. And what I've noticed is intimacy comes from that. Like yeah. the surface, the physical, like, yeah, there's some like, you know, it's important to have a physical connection and attraction to your partner, but most of it is underneath the surface. Like how, how emotionally are you connected with them? 
because like man you can you can like attract the most good look best looking girl like tick all the boxes but if she's not open emotionally there's only so long that that physical attraction is gonna last before yeah. you like fucking mm -hmm. you just lose interest you know yeah, it's about yeah. six weeks yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <legit>. <laughs> <laughs> i love how you put a number to it <laughs> Yeah. You got six weeks to have Good fun. Yeah. You're, not, you're not doing the inner work with us. <laughs> fun, move on. <laughs> I love that. All right, dude. All right. I wanted to ask you, man, like, when it comes to a man trying to get in more into his feminine, what are some practices or things he could do to really help get into that mode mm -hmm. or open that up within himself? Yeah. So if we, like, define the feminine as the emotionality of life, the changing mm -hmm. element of life, the, the, the feeling element, um, anything that gets you out of your head and back into your body would be a way mm. of connecting with, with your feminine. And for me, for me, what's worked the best for me is yoga has got me back into my feminine. Mm. Okay. Yoga is like movement with breath. It is just like, there is no end goal with yoga. There's no like mm. competition. <laughs> There's no like, I'm better than you at stretching. And it's like, no, we're just there to breathe and connect and feel together. True. Um, True so yeah. I fell in love with that practice and I, it's something I, I practice consistently at least three times a week and dance as you know has like unlocked mm. so much and you, you're you know you're going through the dance program with yeah Dougie just, Bell, right? just just finished yeah yeah i just felt that that unlocks deeper levels of pleasure and intimacy within myself because it was mm. a form of expression yeah anything that allows you to express what you're feeling is getting back in touch with your feminine dance writing poetry content photography, like find what your form of expression is uh -huh. and then practice doing that consistently. And that's why, again, TikTok and creating content is so it, nourishing for me because it's yeah. my form of expression. It's like, I, f I feel happier if mm. I've created something in the day okay, because yeah. it's like a form of me speaking what I'm feeling. It's like creativity. It's like expressing my emotions. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yoga, uh, I do a lot of meditation, like just, just fucking yeah. slow down this fucking machine, man. This, yeah. If you, because mm -hmm. yeah, my mind like g gathers so much momentum, and I'm like, I'm so aware of it. So I, I want to just spend a lot of time, just sit, finding stillness, so that I can feel mm -hmm. and connect with like my emotions. Um, so yeah, yoga, dance, and meditation. Nice. I love yeah. the way you articulated that. When it comes to meditation and um, things of that nature, the spiritual world, what are some experiences you've had? spiritually speaking, or in meditations that have really been profound, that have really changed your perspective on, on life? Mm. The first time I discovered like Joe Dispenza's work, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, was a period, yeah, it was a period in my life where I was like, so committed. I, I'm, actually, I'm very, I've always been committed to yeah. this work, but nice. when I discovered Joe Dispenza's stuff, it was every day I was doing his meditations, every day. And I read all three of his books in probably the space of a month because I had nice. a ticket to go and see him live in Toronto. And I was like, I want to get through all this content. Oh, yeah, I yeah. want to be so fucking ready to receive yeah. this guy when, when I see him. Um, I was in the front row. I had a fucking ticket in the front row. Wow. My, my, my first life coach at the time, you know, told me that she was going and she hooked me up with the ticket. And I had practiced his meditations and I, for the first time, got to experience that, that group coherence that he talks about. Oh, when there's yeah, lots of people yeah. meditating together at the same time in, in a room. And um, I remember through meditation, man, there's no fucking plant yeah. medicines involved here. Yeah. My actual awareness, like raising out of my body and being like above the room when wow. we did the meditation together and he's guiding it. And, and I, it was such a profound experience. It was like, whoa, like this energy just went, whoo, swept everyone up. And we were all just like, it was almost like I was just above everything, watching wow. everything unfold. Um, and now he's, he's created the science behind it. There's science to that, you know, yeah, yeah. that group coherence effect, you know, and, and, and what happens in the body when you sh mm. change your energy. And that, that period in my life, I, I, I witnessed the external reflect back to me what I was shifting internal just through the people that were showing up, these opportunities that were coming to me. And I, I was like, I had no money at the time, but everything just kept like falling into place, free tickets to events and all this, like all these things mm. just kept happening. And it just like, confirmed the belief that what's happening inside is shaping what's happening on the outside. Did those things happen like flowing perfectly when you made the commitment to decide to do the content, to be better, to whatever it was, you committed to the journey, then these things happened or these happened first and you committed? Um, well, the, the commitment first was to, to accessing like a deep place within myself mm. to be like, 
whatever, whatever you know, goal that I had around content or business or you know, money or relationship, whatever goal I had set in those areas was connected to something that I wanted to feel, which was, I don't know, gratitude or passion or mm. joy or the freedom that I was going to have when I could work online and go from wherever I wanted mm. to. And the commitment was like, can I, can I access those feelings first? Mm. And the minute I did start to access them, that's when you know, something would happen with content or something would happen with like, you know, a op- business opportunity or some, at the time I was working in a meditation studio. Dude, cool shit started happening. Wow. Like, I got to, I got to, um, do you know who Jojo is by chance? She's a singer. She was, oh, I she heard of her. She's like quite a little bit older. Like She's early 2000s music. Uh, yeah, she was like a really young. F- oh, um, well, yeah, 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 I do, I do. Get I Out was a, one of her biggest songs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She was like the know. Justin Bieber of our mm. generation. When we were growing up, she yeah, was like, I do know. she was yeah. huge. She, came, she booked a, medi- a one-on-one meditation session with me one time in Toronto and she Ooh. came in and I was like, you know, this is like, this is a, this is a fucking big time, you know, yeah. artist. And I'm like mm. leading her through a meditation. I'm like how, like, how did this happen? What the hell? And it was just a reflection of like where I was able to get my frequency mm. to at that time in my life. And I had like other famous people come through, but she was the, the biggest one. Right. Did you ask her for a plug? <laughs> Bro, we're, we're still in we're still in communication on um, Instagram and TikTok oh, actually, dope. and That's uh, crazy. one day there'll be a collaboration happening there one day. So <laughs> watch this space. But it's just like <laughs> it's the cool shit that happens in life when yeah. when you yeah when you're living from that place of abundance. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, my my vision that I'll share with you guys that yeah. I you didn't even ask me this, but I'm going to share. No, it that I'm was so actually going fucking excited question, about so. this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. is I want to be spending i want to be spending time and i want to be in proximity i want to be interviewing people like big sean people like jay shetty people like justin bieber the 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 top people Mm. in their field and connecting with them on that energy because they've accessed something within them that's allowed them to express a level of creativity that is of so much value to this world and i was just listening to or heard my girlfriend listening to jay shetty and big sean's interview have you you listened have you listened to any of their their interviews Um, before no, Joe Shetty, I have uh, a little bit, not like not. clips. Though I'm not even going to cap. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. I, I just think in my mind, how really. cool is that? Yeah. That Jay Shetty has got himself to a point in his life where he gets to sit down with like a rapper, who mm. is like conscious, yeah. and they're having a conversation. Now they hang out, they're good friends. Or Will Smith, one of the best actors in the world. They, Jay Shetty's best mates with him. Oh, facts. And That's I'm like, amazing. man, that is so cool. It is cool. It's like yeah. I'm shooting for that. That's what yeah. I want. I emailed Russell Brand the other day. <laughs> yeah. Yes. He's got a reply from the assistant. Like, he's sorry, pretty busy. Yeah. I'm like, I don't care. I'm going to keep emailing like every, every month. Bro, he's another one. That man yeah. is like what impacted me so much when I started man. this journey. I'm like, he's another guy. Like, I'm committed. Mm. I'm going to meet these people. 100%. Yeah. yeah. 100%. Russell Brand would be sick. Yeah. 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 I had a friend, Tennille Bentley, she was on the show as well. She just started emailing like Bruce Lipton, Preston Smiles, uh, Don Miguel Ruiz, and all these different people. And a few of them replied. She interviewed him. She only had about like, 10,000, 20,000 followers at the time. Well, it wasn't big time, but they just said, okay. Yeah. And it just, it just happened. I was like, wow, that really like, opened my mind. Like, what am I doing? Like, you gotta ask. I, I should just ask. Yeah, like, you gotta ask. Just like, yeah. For sure. I gotta, I, next week, I'm, I'm super pumped. I'm at, interviewing Adam Rower. I don't know who, if you know who Adam Rower is, but no, he's no. a great um, spoken word poet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, um, he's got an amazing podcast as well. And I mm. listen to his podcast all the time. And I was like, you know, I'm gonna fuck, just DM this guy on Instagram. Fuck it. I'll see if he wants to come on. Hey, mm. got back to me and you know it took us a couple of months to get a time locked in but I'm so pumped to get this guy on an interview mm. man it's someone yeah, who I oh, listen to crazy. and follow and yeah. mm. you know inspired by it. and again that's another one of those moments where I'm like pinching myself like holy shit this is like this is happening real, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, I'm manifesting this shit um, so yeah what you guys are doing as well like if that's a goal that's a target just fucking keep keep yeah. going keep making your frequent getting your energy high and mm. i i honestly believe like you can you can fucking have anything oh dude i truly 100%, believe that man yeah i actually i believe that i have that knowledge in my mind but there's so much resistance even asking you on the show i was like oh no nah, it's a bit big time you know like <laughs> you know, all, this, all this shit I'm like bro just yeah. fucking ask you that. like what are you doing but yeah just that yeah. funny like that doubt that just sort of sits yeah. in and i realized i had a huge amount of doubt when i was um in amongst men with a uh, g madison you're making a suit, like, just do some walking, do some dance moves, and he's just like, everyone stop. And he's like, how many times did you doubt yourself? And I was like, wow, like that's my mm. biggest thing, especially in dance, really showed me that, where it's like you're just doubting your own body, your own movements, and it's like, wow, like where does this doubt come from? Big time. Do you have yeah. any idea where this doubt comes from? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, because I feel that. I feel mm. that. So, like, I had this, this happened to me the other day, like even leading up to the start of this men's program that I've, that I've created where there's, I've got, a, I've got about 15 guys in this program, right? It's, a, nice. it's one of the biggest 
was the, the first container for all men that I've, I've held. Yeah. And to have 15 guys in there, it's like I've, my previous group programs only had about eight or 10 people in there. Yeah. So 15 is, a, is the, and, I, and I noticed a bit of like doubt. I was like, fuck, I, you know, am, am I ready for this? Like, am I, and I, I caught myself doubting my ability. Mm. And I had um, one of my coaches support me just through that and give me a really powerful reflection around like, you're fucking, you're good. You're fucking, you got this. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, where, where, do, where does that come from? Right? Mm. And then, Got him Will Smith that doubt, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just slap it right in the face. Yeah. Really yeah. Just it, rock it. <laughs> it it's, 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 the, it's the part of the mind that is trying to keep you safe. Yeah. It's trying to keep you small and keep you safe. Comfortable. And, yeah, comfortable. Dude, that's exactly mm. it. The doubt will only show up when you're getting out of your comfort zone. Mm. The doubt is actually an awesome thing. That's why I was like, oh, sweet. I'm growing right now. There's, yeah. there's expansion happening. Okay, that's an interesting yeah. way to look at it, actually. Yes, yes. Yeah. If you're not doubting yourself, you're not playing big enough. That's cool. This is why I did the dance, because the dance terrified me. I do, same. And I, I, yeah. <laughs> I, was ter- I, I was sitting here with Rebecca Worrell. I'm like, who, who else could come on the, pot on the show? And she's talking about Chocolate Daddy and this guy who used to be a stripper. He's now the dancer, and he, he's going to teach you how to do a performance and then do a lap dance with a woman and then all this shit. And I'm like, fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> fuck no. <laughs> And I was so like, intimidating. I do it. Yeah. Yeah. And when I told that, he's like, How, what are you feeling? I'm like, it's a fuck no. And he was like, what? And I'm like, but I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> he was so confused. Because like, <laughs> that's like, all that fear was just coming up. And I'm like, nah, I'll get to this fucking smash through this. Yeah, it's almost like what I try and tune into and what I advise some of my clients to tune into is those moments where your mind says no, but your body says yes. Mm. It's those things that scare you mentally, but expand you physically. Like your soul yeah. wants to expand, but your mind is terrified. So if you can look at like, what are the things that is scary to my mind, but expansive to my soul? Mm. And like literally just move in that direction. Like going live on Instagram every single day. The mind's like, fuck, that's, ooh, yeah. that's intense. That's a, that's a big one. But yeah. your heart and soul will just like be free because you get to express your truth and share and impact people or mm. jump in an ice bath every day. The mind's like, holy shit, that you should, you're going to die if you get an ice True, every yeah. day. Yeah. But your soul will just be like, Phew, it will expand because you've just pushed through discomfort. Like, mm. yeah. You can apply that to so many things. Um, True, the ice bath is a big one. I had my yeah. first ice bath with um, Alex Waters actually just a couple weeks ago. Oh, nice. I was going to go to that, but yeah. I was yeah, feeling a bit depleted that day. You, you were there in spirit, bro, because he put you on your video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was dope. Yeah. I remember getting in, man, and I was just like, holy, my breath was out of control. I had no idea how radical my breathing was. And Alex was like, bro, like, extend your exhale. I'm like, mm. I had no idea what an exhale even was at that point. <laughs> <You forgot laughs> to breathe? <I> like, <laughs> <laughs> trying to cling on for dear life. Yeah, yeah. 100%. And I was, after about the first minute, I finally got dropped into it. I'm like, oh, wow, this is an incredible feeling. Like I'm sitting and totally comfortable in the ice right now. And the last minute was another terrifying idea. But when you get out, like I could feel like every part of my body so much more clearly. Like normally I have really cold feet, my feet were warm. Mm. My body just felt warm and alive. And I was like, holy crap, this is incredible. And I had no idea like I would even last past 50 seconds. Yeah, yeah. But it's amazing that feeling yeah. is just on the other side of the resistance is on the other mm. side of the fear is always this feeling of like freedom and aliveness that yeah. you get. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a great reminder. That, like everything we want is on the other side of the things we're afraid to feel. Mm. Yeah, I think that's like a same similar feeling as like when you're taking cold showers in the morning during winter. Yeah, yeah, dude. The, those, yeah. those fucking suck, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like the, you know when you walk into the shower and like the the tiles on the floor are cold as fuck. Mm. Yeah, that's. I love, I, love, I, love the, I love the inner dialogue. It's like, not today. Not today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be easy, you know? Yeah. Man, to be fair, yeah. like, to be fair, in Perth, it, it is quite easy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, because I lived in Toronto for a couple of years, and, oh, yeah. and in Toronto, it gets super cold in the winter. Oh, dude. Like, minus 20, minus 30. And the showers out there, I remember... So the water co- would be like zero degrees. Yeah, the water's fucking... Free. You, do, you put it in a cold, I remember it would hit your head, and my head would go numb and start stinging. Oh, it was like oh. a different level of cold. I was like, oh, you, you can only do it for like a good 20, 30 seconds and wow. your head would start to burn. Um, so now that I've experienced that, I was like, all right, cool, cold showers in Perth. This is yeah, it's, 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 yeah. it's, it's like, oh, this is warm, it's cozy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but in winter, it is it's still. It's yeah. still cold, yeah, yeah. Cold, yeah. But yeah. summer cold showers, is, yeah, it's not even a thing. I I'm <laughs> much prefer winter in Perth. Do you? Oh, yeah, really? much prefer because it's mm-hmm. like, in my opinion, it's too hot in summer. Yeah. Yeah. In the winter, at least you can actually play around with like, you know, I'm in the beach. I was in the beach most mornings last winter because I was mm. living right on the beach. And I was like, this is kind of the closest thing I can get to having an ice bath in my backyard. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, it, yeah. it's amazing. Like, mm. just jump in the ocean yeah. in the morning and you're in there and it's like, 
you feel so alive. Yeah. yeah. I just, that's what I love how the cold does that. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. The cold makes you feel mm. alive. True. Whereas the heat just like, it's just, I don't know, for me, it just, it just kills me. Like, True. It really, I find it real challenging. Actually, the cold actually heightens my senses. Like, I feel like I can smell more, I can, the colors are more vivid, mm -hmm. I can hear more. I'm like, holy crap, I'm really like grounded right now in, yeah. in this reality. Yeah. yeah. I actually wanted to ask you um, a few more things. When it comes to a man embodying discipline, confidence, and self worth, what are some tips you have for that or for practices or anything you can give an advice to really embody those three qualities? Discipline, confidence, and self-worth. Mm. Yeah, I feel like the discipline is what creates the confidence and the self-worth. Okay. And then, uh -huh. and then the, the self-worth and confidence, from, from my understanding, mm. from, from my own exploration, comes from your connection with yourself, your connection yeah. with yeah. Like who you are mm. energetically, your connection with your body. That's where your self-worth and confidence comes from. Yeah. If you're not connected to yourself and you think your confidence comes from what you've achieved or like what you know or mm -hmm. like what you have, it's fragile. It's fleeting. It's 100%. like, you know, you're, 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 people can cut through that very quickly. But if you know who you are and you're connected to, to that on a, on a deep level, deep, deep level, mm. like, I don't care. Someone could fucking, I have, I've had videos where people like fucking digging into me and saying like, you're like literally trying to pull me down. I was, yeah. That's cool. That's fine. In the past, that would have been, I would have been shattered. It would have really affected yeah. me. Um, or, you know, the confidence when I when I have when I'm disciplined and I and I stay committed to my meditation and my yoga and I'm eating clean and I'm mm. taking care of my energy and my frequency is really high. They're the days when I'm like, let's go Instagram Live, jump on, like share some okay. truths, or let's make that video that I've been afraid to to create, or like, like let's start that men's program. It's nice. All of the confidence okay. comes from that. Discipline. Yeah. Beautiful. So that's like the heightened level of self care. Yes. Is also, is also part of. Yes, it. bro. Yeah, a hundred percent. That's why mm. I'm so big on, because, discipline, you know, on a material level, like to to achieve anything on a material level re requires discipline. Yeah. And you can apply discipline to like saying, oh, I want to make a lot of money, so I'm going to be really disciplined and like <laughs> investing in a certain way or, you know, I want to get my body to a certain level, so I'm going to be really disciplined with working out in the gym. Mm -hmm. But like, what if you just applied that discipline into self-connection? I'm going to be disciplined with connecting with myself every single day, which might mean I'm going to meditate for this, this, this amount of time or I'm going to go to this many mm -hmm. yoga classes or I'm going to just listen to what I need and then be disciplined in honoring that. True. That shift for men is so profound. Because like most men, we, we, are, we are pretty good at being disciplined. Like if, if you've mm. achieved something in your life or if you played sport or if you started a business, there's, some dis there's a lot of discipline required to do yeah, that. Yeah. Mm. You just got to channel it in a different area. True. And um, I've, I've found once you make that shift, like pff, life gets a lot easier, mm. a lot easier and, and, and requires way less effort. That, that's, that's the trippy one, like yeah. less effort to achieve things. Well, what are, what are the, the self-care practices that you have throughout the day? Like, what's the perfect day look like for you? Um, for me, I like to have a lot of time in the mornings. So, like, at the moment, I, I, like, to, I like to be up pretty early, like 5 o'clock or 5.30. 5 a.m. club. Yeah, 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 and I don't take my... I try to make sure that my first call is no earlier than 9 o'clock, 9 a.m. So, mm. I've got about a four, four and a half hour window there of, like, taking care of myself. Yeah. Um, at the moment, I, I will like, as soon as I wake up, just jump on, I got a little trampoline at the back, I'll just jump on the trampoline, and just get, oh, some, okay. get some blood flowing, and then mm. I, and I pretty much dive straight into, my, straight into my meditation. Tony Robbins, Robbins yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Tony <laughs> yeah. Robbins, yeah, that's exactly what he does. Though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, man, meditation for me is like, it's, it's medicine, eh? Mm. It's medicine. And once you really be disciplined with it and, and, and be really intentional with like, connecting with with what you feel in your body like there's meditation of like i'm just gonna focus on my breath i'm not gonna like break this focus but like feel what can you what can you feel in this moment can you feel the aliveness in your body and can you just stay can you merge your consciousness with that feeling wow. with that aliveness and what i've found is when you can when you can do that and you do it consistently that 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 is the place of abundance and love that is, a, that is a vibration that naturally, naturally, it just raises your vibration. And now I don't even try to really manifest things. I used to like visualize, like, oh, I'm going to achieve this or get that. Now I just allow the vibration to rise naturally. And then when I go and bring in my day, I can be guided by divinity. It's just that word. Like, yeah. divinity guides me, inspired action. I always ask, like, what inspired action does divinity want me to take today? 
the clearer I am inside, the more you can like you can hear you you, you get the you get the message, you get the action. Wow. Um, that clears the noise so much. Clears the noise, yeah, yeah. Manifesting this and that. Yeah. So like on Friday, I, I, Thursday I had an amazing day and I, and I sat for an hour and a half in meditation in the morning. And usually mm. I sat for an hour. And I found that extra half an hour gave me an extra level of energy that like allowed some new things to come through me that, that was so wow. unique and, and allowed things to flow effortlessly. An hour a day. day. Yeah. I, I'm minimum an hour a day. That's, that's, that's yeah. superb, man. Yeah, yeah, thanks, man. Good legend on that, bro. That's Thank you, bro. Method. Yeah, do you, yeah. Do you set a timer, like, or do you just kind of like intuitively know? No, nah, I'll set a timer. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I'll set a timer. Because yeah. <laughs> the mind, the mind will go, "Fuck, has this been an hour? Has this been like two hours?" Like, yeah. or, and the mind, the mind will start to like, question if I've got like a meeting or a call, and like, I like to know. And if the timer goes off, I'll sit for a bit longer. Um, mm. But then I'll, I'll try and get to some some form of movement. Movement's really important for me, yeah. as as it is for most men. But mm. the movement now is way more intuitive for me rather than I got to hit the gym or smash that really hard workout because mm. what I found with, with staying disciplined to working out really hard, I caught myself burning out at time, burning yeah. myself out because I would like train really hard at the gym and then I would like take all these calls in the day and then mm. my nervous system was like way too activated. Right, yeah. yeah, and over mm. time it just started to burn me out. So I'm just like, I'm way gentler, way yeah. more gentler with myself. Um, and then yeah, like I, mean, I love going to the beach, man. I love just like bringing my deck chair down the mm. beach, and I just like just sit sit there, sit there, and do the same thing, but with my eyes open, just like feel the aliveness in my body, and just like watch the sunset, and yeah. just go, this is fucking life, eh? Yeah. Yeah. The last couple of days at the beach has been magical, and I just find if you can find so much joy from just watching nature, yeah, you've met, you're good, you're free, hundred percent. You yeah. know, like you don't need the artificial stimulus from social media and all the stuff. Mm. Just find joy from just like existing and watching a tree or watching a sunset. Once you hit that place, you're good. Yeah, you right. don't need a lot. Yeah. Do you find like nature has some sort of like um, element of like that cleanses you or like that helps you in any way? Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, there's like an energy to nature. It's like that, that Schumann resonance, right? Yes. Yeah. That measurable frequency that starts to like work with your nervous system and calming you down. Yeah. And, um, just like, yeah, it, it does. Because like, when you watch a sunset, the colors that are, that are changing, it's like, it's the most beautiful piece of art you'll, you'll ever see. Yeah, and it's always yeah. different. And that, that, that energy is like interacting with you on a subtle level as well. Your circadian rhythm. Like all these things are responding to nature because like, that's where we come from. And when we are disconnected from that, we're disconnected with that rhythm. That's a big one actually, rhythm. Rhythm, okay, yeah. Once yeah. you find rhythm in your life, like, Go, try to go to bed at the same time, try to wake up at the same time, try to meditate at the same time, mm. eat at the same time. That rhythm, your body craves that. And that's what I find with my meditation is like if I hit four days in a row where I sit around the same time and I go deep, the meditation quality is way higher. Oh, more powerful. I see. Yeah. I was talking about this in one of my TikToks um, in regards to meditating at the same time on the same day with a routine. Because a, a lot of times your spirit guides and things like that can understand your routine and actually work with you at those times because there's predictability there. Yes. If it's all fragmented and scattered, you can't build that energy with the universe, with high powers, because how are they ever going to know if so it's true. 5 p.m., 2 o'clock or whatever. So else. true, yeah. yeah. So you can really feel that energetic difference. Yeah, and what I noticed was, like, mm. if, say on the weekend, on Saturday night, I stayed up later and allowed myself to sleep in longer. Mm. The, the, uh, and, and same as on, on Sunday, what I found on Monday, if, my, if I'm trying to get back to a 5 a.m. start, but I've just like disrupted that sleep rhythm, I'm quite tired on a Monday. Mm. And I'm like, I'm like sluggish, I'm like, why, why, why is that? It's, it's the rhythm, yeah. Oh, okay. You know, yeah, it, yeah. it takes like a day or two to find that rhythm again of waking up at the same time mm. and just feeling more fresh, alive in the morning, you know? It's, it's interesting, it's so simple, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that but it's really. powerful, yeah. Yeah. It isn't the same with babies, like babies react a lot better with like some sort of like pattern and rhythm. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes, for sure, for sure. So they they yeah. need like a routine, like a solid routine, because they like, even though they don't, they, they, they don't really understand much, but their body is pretty much guiding them from there. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. I think it was the same. I was speaking to um, one of these guys, um, one of, an, a client who just had a baby, and he said like, having the routine for a baby is essential. It's mm. like, just having, even, not, not, not just for them, for you as well. Because like it will give you the time and the space to do the things that you need to do, because eventually it gets to a point where the baby is just so intuitive, or like it's like they know oh, okay it's time to eat, it's time to sleep, it's time to like um, mm. 
so it's done. We're gonna go for a walk at yeah. this time. So the, she, she's just more calm. The baby's just more calm. Oh, that's a great and point, And it's man. so predictable because everything is just so predictable and structured. Like it's there's no there's there's no um, um, unpredictability. Mm -hmm. much. So the baby already knows. So if you if you if you apply that same concept to like to you when you're older, I'm assuming it would kind of be the same. So mm -hmm. life would just flow a lot easier. Big time. Yeah. yeah. But in saying that, I am the worst when it comes to that. Like, yeah, because it's, it's hard, right? Like, I went last yeah. night when I went out for dinner with my partner and like, um, I like to break out. I don't know, I'm, I'm curious to hear your guys' perspective on this because like, we spoke, we've spoken a lot about like discipline and like, you know, like, you gotta meditate for an hour. Or, like, I choose to do all these like strict things for my, yeah. my, my connection practice. But like, sometimes, you know, like fucking last night, a bottle of wine, right? I smashed a pizza and a bottle of wine and um straight up <laughs> I'll be honest with you, like I didn't like wake up feeling the best this morning. But like mm. that's okay. Like I wanted to break out of like what I'm always doing to, yeah. to have like is is pendulation the word or like mm. a, a, a a swing. Like I don't wanna be doing the same thing all True. the time. I wanna yeah. I don't wanna be attached to this one idea of like this mm. is who I am. I never do these things, I'm just like just this person. Mm. Yeah. Like like sometimes I'll like smoke a joint or sometimes I'll like, yeah, right, you know, yeah. do things that like, you know, I just want to have fun and yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like shift my consciousness in a different way mm, yeah. and, and, ex and, and experience the, the, the 3D nature of my True. life as yeah. much as possible. Because mm. if you don't, then I don't know, is that you kind of miss a big part of being a human. Yeah, right? yeah. And sometimes that can be a good reminder of how important your routine is yeah. when you have a pizza and a one. I'm not feeling too fresh, but. Okay, because yes. it's, uh, yeah. like, it actually makes sense what you're doing, yes. you're re reinforcing your behavior. Bro, yeah. 100%, yeah. like now it's like, cool, Monday, I'm ready, like I got, you know, had my fun this weekend, it's like mm. back into my, you know, my, my commitment to myself, True, yeah. Yeah. you know? 50 Cent says it the best, sunny days wouldn't be special if it wasn't for rain. Philosophy, bro, philosophy. Oh man. I love that. <laughs> it's true. I wanted to ask you about um, living in the heart and dropping into the heart and heart-brain coherence. What are some things you do around that when your head's getting a little bit out of control? You wanna just drop back in? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, when I'm meditating, I like to consciously like breathe into my heart and feel yeah. that coherence and feel that, you know, it's so noticeable. As soon as you connect with it and like mm. you feel your heart beating and, it, and like the, the, the elevation of gratitude and, and how it creates that, that frequency, it's an energy. Mm. And I guess the more you can practice doing that throughout yeah. the day, True. the more potent it is. Is there practices you could do to, if you're on a work meeting or you're on a date or something like that, you're like, I need to do this, I need to do it quickly. <laughs> on a date? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes you get a little bit heady, yeah. right? For How sure. would you do that? Is there any tools you have to make it quickly or a little routine you can do in the car or something you can just do during the day? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess that, that is the, the element of meditation that you take off the, the chair or the cushion or the, like, your mat mm -hmm. or whatever. It's like, how do you then apply that throughout your entire life? How do you mm. just stay mindful of like where your head is at 100%. throughout the day? And in my mm. opinion, I think having conscious check-ins throughout throughout the day is, is mm. key. Like before you get out of the car, before you walk through the door, before you come sit down to a podcast, it's like check in with like how you're feeling. What's like mm. what's alive in me right now? Where's my attention at? Take a breath, maybe it's like one or two breaths yeah. into the heart. What, whatever it is that you can do to just bring your attention back to, to now, this moment mm. right now, and, and try to live in a constant state of meditation. Yeah, yeah. Fucking easier said than done, and I'm not gonna sit here and say like, I'm, <laughs> I'm like the master at that, yeah. um, but I'm trying. Like, yeah. That is an ongoing commitment in my life to just like make sure that my awareness is always on this moment, and if my mind is racing, like cool, can I not, like, notice that? That's, yeah. that's my yeah. reality right now. Um, so I think the more you, you just consciously decide to yeah. like, be in your in your heart or present mm. uh, naturally your mind will be less active yeah okay do you separate the spaces between your meditations meditation space your workspace and your like um, bedroom or sleeping space mm. yeah. that's a that's a good one right because yeah. like it's back to rhythm is yeah. if, if you're meditating at the same place at the same time every day your, your body and mind is gonna it's gonna like it's gonna sink it's gonna sink up to that mm. so I've got a, I've got a awesome meditation chair that I use and I, and I, these are some other like hacks that I've found work so well. Mm. Essential oil, frankincense essential oil. Oh yeah. yeah. On the I bottom try. of the feet because the feet are very absorbent. Feet? Yeah, yeah, the feet like will that. absorb, um, mm. are very absorbent, like absorbing yeah. the most and, and purging the most like toxins from our feet. Every day, 
that you have an oil that you use or a smell or it's an incense or whatever it is that you use for your meditation that your mind syncs up smell with a feeling. Mm. Because for me, smell is the most potent anchor. And Tony Robbins talked about anchoring, like you wanna anchor in a state. Mm. So I use an essential oil for my meditation that I only use for meditation, it anchors in that feeling. Uh, I will also use blackout, like, my, like I got a mask that blacks out all the lights. You wanna try and block out the senses. I use like noise canceling headphones, the mask, so I'm blocking out all the sound, blocking out all the light, and I'm using a smell and allowing that rhythm mm. to continuously help me just like tune out from the external and tune into the, the, the 5D. Yeah, I you love know. that, bro. Yeah. yeah. I think I read a book once where I think it was Einstein or Isaac Newton or someone used to use um, oranges in his desk when he, was, when he was being creative or doing some kind of brain something. He'd always smell the orange, put it back down and do his work. That's how he tuned in because right. the smell yeah. yeah. So you've already cracked that code. Yeah, well, that is, yeah, that's crazy. That's what essential oils, yeah. Yeah. Essential, that's what, what um, yeah. a lot of like, you know, I think Aubrey Marcus talks about this in his book where he uses mm. um, like lemon and, and orange, like the citri citrusy yeah. essential oils in his office because it stimulates, you know, creative thought and, and, mm. and, you know, productivity. So it's like smell is a fucking powerful anchor. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Another question for you, bro. If you get to write a letter to yourself at 17 years old, only three things, what would you want to express to that version of yourself? Wow, what a great question. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Because um, like 17, the 17 year old version of us is so, I don't know about you guys. But it's year it's 12, man. That's year like 12, a yeah. Really hectic, man. Yeah, um, no, I just think back to like the 17 year old me like going down to Levers and just like, just wanting to get girls and like being, you know. Sending it. Yeah, just <laughs> like <laughs> fucking binge drinking with his mates. Yeah. Um, three things to say to him. I would say, um, Invest in Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's one, two, and three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bitcoin, Ethereum. Yeah. Uh, fucking, what's the other one? Jewish coin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I would say, because my 17 year old version, the 17 version of 17 year old me cared a lot about what people thought. Mm. So I would say, like, doesn't matter what people think. Um, don't, don't worry about what people think. Mm. Uh, I'd also say to him, listen to yourself. Listen mm. to what you want. I, I took advice from, I was like, I would just listen to the authority figures in my life and take their advice. Like, you know, my dad or, you know, my, my friend's dad, who was a financial planner. And I was like, he's like, you know, no, you should do this. You should do that. I was like, okay, done, done. I just did it. Just listen to them. I didn't listen to myself. Mm. So I'd say, listen to myself. Um, and I would try and remind him or show him how fucking powerful he is. Mm. Like, I was like, I played soccer, like, I was pretty convinced at that age that I wanted to play professional soccer, that was oh, like, okay. my dream. Mm. And at 17, the dream was dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're not playing in the UK, or if you're not made it, you, yeah, you're not. Maybe Perth Glory. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that, that's the thing, I still was committed to like, achieving that, and I was playing at quite a high level oh, at okay, that time. Yeah, yeah. I got it semi-professional, so I was oh, like, dope, doing, yeah. getting paid to play and stuff, but like, I know, technically, mm. I could have made it. Technically, like, yeah. I, was, I had it, but my mindset, I didn't have enough confidence in myself. Okay. And I, I didn't know how to tap into that internal belief system yeah. to mm -hmm. just like believe in my own ability. Um, so I would have yeah, really said that to him. It's like, you, you, you fucking, you've got what it takes. Yeah. You, know? like, you, you just believe in yourself. Amazing, bro. Yeah. Uh, and that, that's the same thing, right? Like if we, until we believe in ourselves, it doesn't matter what other people say to you. You have to really like know within yourself that yeah. you, you've got this. And how do you tap into that inner knowing and belief within yourself now? Yeah, now now it's it's through connecting with who I am, connecting yeah, with yeah. like like we've, like we've been discussing, yeah. just like the, the abundance that's already there. There is mm. nothing to prove, mm. nothing to prove. I've got nothing to prove to anyone, neither do, neither do you guys. It's like yeah. once you know that like that abundance energy of who you are, that love, that abundance, it's always there, it always will be there. Mm. You realize that like it doesn't matter. You can fuck things up, you can fail, like you, know, you can try things and not work. None of it matters. Mm. Actually, nothing out there matters at all. True all that much as much as we think it does and once you stay connected to that place it's like you can have more fun you can do things that you want you can take more risks you can share more shit online True. <laughs> yeah, that's you know yeah, it's yeah. I, 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 that's for me where the belief comes from now Fuck it's yeah. like just how do I feel at the end of the day mm. bro you fucking sent those last that's questions awesome bro <laughs> or the whole podcast you sent but that was immaculate Thanks, man. Right? Was, there any, any, was there any questions that you wanted to ask before we no that's pretty no? much it yeah pretty much yeah. covered all of it Let me have a look. Bro, time has flown hour and a yeah, half yeah Really? Yeah. Wow. That's next level, right? Yeah, this is why I love podcasting because yeah. you just, how, how, good, how nourishing is a, is a good conversation mm. with guys as well. You know it what is. I mean? Like with lads. Yeah, 100%. Like, oh, okay, man. yeah. 
Pretty much. So you, you answered most of them without me asking. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. yeah, that's a power yeah. flow, baby. Yeah. You guys are good. You guys are great, great podcasters, man. Like great oh, questions. Thank you. And Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. I've I've been I've had a podcast for like four or five years now, mm. um, and I love I love asking people questions. Like, yeah. I, I love learning about like what makes someone who yeah. they are. You know. I truly believe that questions are the answers. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and even like I ask myself questions sometimes and hold it in my meditation because I believe that the question resonates the same frequency as the answer. Mm. You just hold it long enough, you're going to just pull it in. Yes. And I've done experiments where I meditate before I sleep, holding a question in my mind and sending it out, like really pushing it out. I wake up in the morning and I hear a voice telling me the answer to that question. Mm. And they're really profound, like things I just wouldn't even comprehend. Right. Like I, I remember asking, um, asking God, I was like, um, trying to make sense of Christianity and this life and all this kind of stuff. Like, what do I have to do as a man? Like, what, do I, what am I here for to be as a man? And I was reading the Bible a lot of this time. I like Christianity and the, the, the foundations yeah, of it. Cool. And it was saying, the Bible's not even finished. He's like, um, the Bible's not finished. Take what you know from all the best people that you work, from all the prophets, from all the, the saints, from all the people that you admire in your life. He's like, and em embody bits and pieces from those people to become your own prophet, your own level. And if you want, finish writing the Bible. Like, yeah. write your own book. Like, How good's that? It was like yeah. an incredible so answer. I'm like, yeah. wow. And this was like a voice telling me this. Yeah. It articulated a lot That's better than okay. I did. I love this was like that. a year ago, but I it was just really yeah. powerful. Hey, I've got a question for you guys. Yeah. Um, what's what's something that you have shifted in your life recently that's had a really positive effect on your own energy and vibration? Probably um, the feminine wounds that I've that I've got, which I wasn't even aware of because mm. there was quite a few. And I've hanging out with a lot of really, really like um, powerful embodied women who are just on that healing journey and just just beautiful souls. Yeah. And spending time with them. And just watching, observing myself in their presence. I was like, whoa, like I'm getting like memories coming up. I'm getting neediness coming up. I'm getting, I want validation from these people. Like all this, like just I'm like, fuck, Brad, like keep it together, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> and um, I was just, yeah, just witnessing all these different unfoldments. And then one girl reminded me of one of my stepmoms that passed away. Another one reminded me of a stepmother who my dad broke up with. And then I had another one and this memories flooded up of all these different wounds in my life. I'm like, oh wow, I'm really actually um, craving of affection and validation from women. And I had a flashback of like having no memories of my mom being affectionate with me at all. Because it's just the way it was yeah, dynamic of the family. Yeah. And then when I had that, my dad broke up with the, with the woman um, who was like my mom or my stepmother for quite a long time and from me from being five to like 12, which is pivotal years. And then the other, the, um, other stepmom who I got when I was 14 till about 17 who passed away, I was like, wow, whenever I'm feeling, whenever I'm being with a woman, I'm feeling love and I'm feeling loss and I'm feeling separation and I'm having fear of loss, like all these different things. And that shifted for me at the breath work with Jared Loretto. Holy shit, wow. All of it, which was like, I was just crying so much because there was so much coming up. And then after that session, I was like looking and spending time with women again. I'm like, wow, I'm really seeing the woman for who she is and not my projection of her Damn. or my wound bleeding out. And I was so taken back, I'm like, I just, and a lot of my attraction was gone. Because this attraction I was feeling for women was like, maybe lust or attraction was yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah. too heavy. Yeah. And I was just like, I'm not feeling it anymore. Wait, did you turn gay? <laughs> no, no, I didn't turn gay. <laughs> but now, <laughs> like, maybe I am like, <laughs> but now watch you yeah. magnetize women to you mm. because that lust or attraction that you had before was probably coming from a subtle level of neediness that yeah. was blocking the women from showing up or mm. the right women from showing up. I do like, yeah. you watch now, the, the right yeah. women are gonna just, like, just come to you. Like, so, super interesting. That's powerful. But more so just being the ability to be like, to be there as a friend and connect and see them as just a like, human being, not like male, female, just everyone's just a human, seeing their pure essence and just being free from that feeling. I know it's not over because it's probably cycles, mm -hmm. but this is the first layer that's been ripped off. I'm like, wow, I'm really loving this now. So now I'm so much more focused on my business and on myself now because I'm not having that neediness. Yeah. And I know where it's coming from. Yeah, Phen yeah. Dude, phenomenal. Wow, that's, that's biggest, a powerful. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Mm. What about you, bro? Um, I think for me, it'll be something similar in terms of like um, healing the feminine, but in a different way. I think it was one of the first instances a couple of weeks ago where I stood my ground um, towards my father. And um, it was like, it was a little bit of a back and forth, but it was kind of like the inner child, like, knowing like and having that grounding that okay like I have I've got my own back you know what I mean like it was me like the, the 
old age Ryan's like the, got the inner child back. Like you, you, there's no need for you to fear because at the end of the day, whatever happens, I'm grounded within myself and I always have your back. And you know, back in the day, you're like that, that inner child wounding around like father issues and all that kind of stuff and like um, the, how you view it. So it like, attached, like to me, it attached to the feminine in terms of like, you know you've got the safety within yourself. So that safety, like no matter what happens, that safety is within you and you've always got your own back. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, that was that that was like the probably the most powerful moment that I've had recently, um, and that was like the one that kind of had the biggest impact and realization within myself, because it was kind of taking the power t with to yourself, and yeah, just just knowing that you know you can, just knowing you've got you pretty much have your own back. Like, yeah, no matter what happens. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. That's once that unlocks. Yeah, once you know that unlocks. You've got your own back. Yeah. Guys. <laughs> yeah. And I think it gave yeah. me a, like a different level of security and confidence within myself. Because the, at the end of the day, like, no matter what happens, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Like, yeah. I can, I can mm -hmm. take myself out of yeah. any situation. Like, yeah. I don't need anyone to back me up. I don't need... As the, the, you do need that support, and that support is always going to be there. So you have, like, we have Brett, and we've got a whole bunch of our boys. Um, but it's just kind of like, even then you still need that safety within you. And yet once you have that safety within you, it's a kind of like a different level of confidence. So you're mm -hmm. a lot less fearful. Like you you can go out there and get like your, you, you can get your own. Like even something as simple as is like going up and approaching women, the, the fear around that is a lot less. Because at the end of the day, you're just, you're safe. You know, you're, yep. you're, yeah, you don't, you don't really, you're not scared, you're not. Um, there's no, and the resistance just kind of dissipated. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't realize it at the time when it happened because I guess there was a little bit of emotion attached around it. But as it kind of started processing it, I was like, oh, holy shit, like this is a very, yeah. like a, a big, big, yeah, very, yeah, very yeah. big and like powerful moment. Yeah. Jordan Peterson talks about the death of the father, whether it's a real death or a metaphorical death, yeah. Yeah. and how that unlocks another level in a man's life mm -hmm. where he becomes you know, the king of his own domain, so to speak. And when you have that metaphorical death of, of your father, whether he's aging or you're stepping into your own manhood, it just literally cracks you open to have so much more power in your life. Oh, yeah, but you're no longer you know, the, the prince, you're, yeah, you're the most king, definitely. so to speak. So true. So true, yeah. 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 Bro, what about yourself, man? The biggest shift you've had lately? Lately? Um, or the biggest one that comes to mind? Yeah. For me, it's probably like, just going back to what, what I've been sharing around this moment being like the only fucking thing that matters mm -hmm. ever. Yeah. And, and that, that shift happened to me, you know, when I was 22 in my corporate job, like realizing yeah. like, mm -hmm. wait a second, I just need to focus on this moment. And once I dedicate my fullest commitment to this moment, mm -hmm. everything else takes care of itself. Yeah. I don't have to worry about, oh, like, how am I going to do that? Or like, is it going to work out? I'm like, no, just, just be, be present right now. And I noticed in my life that I, even though I knew that, mm -hmm. um, I wasn't prioritizing it as much as I, I feel like I should have been. Yeah. And yeah. something shifted in me like a, kind of a couple of months ago, whereas it just landed in me, man. I was like, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna just make, if I can't find joy for existing, then I'm always gonna be chasing. Yeah. Mm, so now it's just like, I'm on my phone way less. That's been a big yeah. one. I just yeah. like don't, in the afternoon, I, I tend to finish at around three o'clock now, yeah. put my phone away and I'll just like either walk down to the beach and just sit there, read a book and just, just chill, no. yeah. find the joy or fucking go have a walk or do something fun. Like, you know, that, that to me is once you realize that the joy for existing, yeah. it, it, that's the only thing that matters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and then um, everything else is like, oh, it's, it's a byproduct, it's fun. Oh, like that video did great, oh, cool. Mm. Or like money's flowing in. Cool. Like now, and this is the big shift that I've noticed with that, once you find the depth in that, is money starts showing up, or the, all the things that you want start showing up, but you no longer care that much about it. Yeah. Like I signed a client yesterday, like one of the biggest, like, biggest paying clients that I've, that I've signed in a while. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, cool. All right, yeah. you're paying me that, that money, and that money's coming in, and yeah, it, that's great, but like it hasn't really changed how I feel that much, because yeah. I already mm -hmm. feel good. Whereas in the past, if, if, if you, lots of money comes into your life and you're like, holy crap, this is awesome, I'm killing yeah. it. Money's still your God. Yeah. Money's yeah. still got you. Because when you lose a lot of money, you're going to be fucking devastated. True. Yeah. 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 So I, I, I'm, try, I, I'm that, yeah, that realization. Mm. Fuck, man. That's amazing. Yeah, I'm yeah. just so grateful. I'm so grateful for life. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Yeah. I have one more question. It's like a very famous song. What is love to you? 
Mm. <laughs> what song is that? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> 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 Great song. Great song. Um, hmm. Yeah, I feel like love, love for me is, it's like, what does it mean to me? Like, what yeah. is love to me? I don't think it's anything external. Yeah, under, yeah. Yeah, under it, yeah. I, I feel like it is, love is like, for me, is that internal connection with that, that higher power. Yeah. Whatever, divinity, God, consciousness, you know, Atman, supreme being, whatever. Mm. Knowing that like, you have a connection to that part of you. Yeah. And knowing that that part of you's always got you. Yeah. Right. Got you back. Like, it's, it's got you. And, and mm. surrendering and, try, and just going like, I surrender to that, that higher power. I, yeah. I, I surrender like all my, like everything in my life to that. And that's, dev that's love and devotion, isn't it? I yeah, guess yeah, it, yeah. It, it's, what, it's what it is. And I, I, I think until you have a connection with that, mm. the material love that we have, you know, is, is always a surface level love. You know, you, you can never really love someone truly and deeply until you've discovered like that deep, deep reservoir of love within yourself. So, yeah. Mm. So, yeah, for me, it's that. Yeah. What about yeah. you? Uh, I don't know. I think, like, love is just one of those emotions that we kind of just throw around. Like, you know, um, you say, I like, love this coffee, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> like, in, but to me, love is, like, a, is more than just an emotion. It's like, a, it's like true connection with the universal, like, it's like the universal language of connection, mm -hmm. you know, like... And for me, like, it's kind of like a great example would be like um, the love that the Mother Earth has for like plants and for us by providing. That's love. Like mm. that's pure, un, un, uncorrupted love. Mm -hmm. Like the, the, the way the sun provides for the earth, like it provides from the, um, to the earth without expecting anything back. It's just providing yeah. purely. Yeah. That's, that's love. And like that's, that's true, like interconnected energy that connects everything that is that is universal that is mm. beyond beyond that it is it is and i think when we pretty much i do like pretty much exactly what you said like when you tap into that level of love is when you're truly tapping into the universal consciousness or you do the universe universal connection that makes us beings mm. I'd, I'd, I'd probably say i think wow. to me that's what true love is like it's not like a it's not, it's not external I 100% agree it's not external it's something deeply internal that's ingrained that creates everything yeah that, yeah. Di that divine intelligence that's yeah. operating in the background that like yeah. oh, that's, that's beautifully beautifully said yeah like just to, yeah. to watch you know the, like I was watching these birds this morning eat the, like the leaves from this, this, this tree and like that's an example of that like this tree just providing nurturance so that the birds could eat the tree providing shade so that we can sit under like just unconditional. Yeah, unconditional, unconditional yeah, love. Yeah. Unconditional love. Yeah, yeah. Expecting nothing. Better. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's so beautiful. Yeah. Eh? It's all around us all the time. Oh, yeah. 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 What about what you, about bro? <laughs> Man, I think Ryan expressed it so beautifully. But um, I've always thought that love, a, a being emotion or mistaken for an emotion, but actually it's a force. Like, um, yeah. interconnects us all. Um, that also has an attraction force to it. There was a poet, you know, uh, Rumi, or Rumi, mm. however you say his name, he once said that. The lover and the beloved cannot be separated because that love is a force of attraction as well. Oh, you beautiful. Know? So it, it keeps us interconnected. It, um, great. it guides us, it directs us, and it is the highest expression of spirit, you know, which comes from within, and we give that as well. Mm -hmm. The same way God gives to us and the sun gives to us and whatever else. Everything just coincides with that. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I, I truly believe that if you hold love for somebody within you, they will, you'll, be, you'll, soon leave, you'll soon be with them, if that makes sense. Even like people who have, have people who, siblings who have passed away, like myself and yourself, you can sometimes feel them and know that they're around, and there's, that bond of love will be there forever. Mm. That holds you together. You may see him in dreams, or you may come to a meditation, or whatever else, because like that attraction is always on. Hmm. Mm. I feel you, mm. man. Wow, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Man, we just described that really well, anyway. We did, man. We did a good <laughs> job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, Thank uh, man, you so just, much, yeah, bro. I appreciate it. Thanks, beautiful. Thanks, fellas. That was yeah. amazing. Love you boys. So nourishing to have these conversations, yeah, isn't it? It is.